Greetings everyone, welcome to this particular video if you need some assistance with level 3 organic chemistry. So today we're going to go through the question 1 of the um, 2019 exam paper. Um, as always, three videos, one question per video. And um, let's get started. Okay, so question 1. Complete the table below, show either the structure formula or the systematic name for each organic molecule. So with all of these, so these are just simple achieve questions. Um, if you can do these, all right. So first thing first, um, so that's an aldehyde function group. That's a chlorine um, function group as a branch. So we prioritize this carbon as number one because that the aldehyde is far more reactive compared to the chlorine. So that will be our carbon number one. So we will name this, I always go backwards. So this is pentanyl because there are five carbons. On the fourth carbon, I have a chloral group. So it's four chloro, uh, can't spell, first video, I always can't spell in the first video of the night, um, for chloropentanel. Okay, so um, you don't need to say pentan one now because that carbon, same as carboxylic acid, that's always carbon number one. Okay, ethyl hexanoate, always again, work backwards. Hexanoate, so six carbons, so hex means six, so this is what I always do. Just draw six carbons, and hexanoate, so that is an ester. So that means you need to have this as your hexanoate, and then ethyl means on the other side of the group you have two carbons so you can complete the carbons make sure all of them have four bonds don't make a mistake here um, if you've done all the other part then making me make a mistake here is very very um, disappointing I would say all right next one um, so look at the functional group here so this is an a mind so this is carbon number one number two number three number four so this is butanamide, again just looking at the longest chain with the functional group and then on the third carbon you have a methyl group. So this is 3-methyl-butanamide. Pretty straightforward. Next one. Uh, propanel um, given to you can be formed from the oxidation of a primary alcohol. Uh, all right, that's very important. Draw the structural formula of the primary alcohol and explain why distillation is required to obtain the aldehyde before drawing the oxidation reaction. Okay, so this is a experimental technique question. So first thing first, we need to figure out how we make propanel. So let's quickly draw propanel first. And please note, and this is actually really good how they did it here, just to use this as an example. In year 12, when you see something written as COH, what normally it wouldn't just be COH, it would be like CH or CC or whatever, but the, if you see it written as OH, the O is in front of the H, that means you have an alcohol. If you have an H written in front of the oxygen, that means you have an aldehyde, okay? Um, but you should know this is an oxidation reaction, so that means we must have had an alcohol to begin with. Okay, so we need to have, oops, where did the double bond come from? We must have a OH group. Okay, so this is a this is propanel, uh, propen 1 O, and that structure is the one we want. Okay, so that goes right there. So why, what is distillation? Okay, so distillation, so if we don't do anything, if we don't distill, what's going to happen is that the aldehyde will readily oxidize to the carboxylic acid. So it's kind of like cooking in a way. If you, like say, if you're cooking uh, like a, your favorite dish and um, you can, you know, set up ingredients like these, let them react and you, you cook your food. But if you let it sit in there, you continuously react, you continuously cook, and then you burn it, and then you make something else. So what distillation is, is just once you have made your ideal product, which is the propanel, we want to stop it from further reacting. And this is where distillation comes into place. And then distillation is also a really good technique to separate mixtures, because um, if I were to summarize it, distillation works on the basics of, um, it works on the 
the basis of basics of um, melting point and boiling point. Okay, so that's a key thing. Let's look at these three structures. You have alcohol. You have a primary alcohol, to be exact, primary alcohol. You have aldehyde, and you have carboxylic acid. So this is you need to you need to um, know a bit of structure and bonding from um, three point four. This is where hydrogen bonding comes into place. You should be able to, depending on how well your three point four is, when your hydrogen is bonding to oxygen. And then what you can have is hydrogen bonding with a neighboring molecule. When you have OH, same thing, you can have hydrogen bonding. This one is if it's going to be even greater because you have another carbon group. So this is going to be even higher melting point and boiling point. But then if you look at your aldehyde, it has the lowest boiling point and the melting point because it has no hydrogen bond. So for our C, uh, for our primary alcohol, this has hydrogen bonding so this has hydrogen bonding carboxylic acid has hydrogen bonding and then aldehyde no hydrogen bonding so aldehyde as a result has the lowest boiling point and melting point oops melting point so how distillation works, I'm, I'm not going to draw it. You can look it up the diagram um, on some websites. Um, very easy to find. How distillation works is kind of like, um, you, you, let, let's just make an example. If, if say, propane 1 no, let's say if this melt, if this boils, let's, let's just for example, if this thing boils at 50 degrees, if the carboxylic acid boils at 70 degrees, I'm just making this up. Um, it's going to be higher than that. If I um, the aldehyde will have the lowest boiling point, which is let's say 20 degrees. I'm just going to make, make it up, all right? So this is um, just off the top of my head. This is not accurate. So you can see that there's a difference in the boiling point. And how distillation works is that you can set the temperature of the heating, let's say to 35 or 40 degrees. So your alcohol is not going to melt or it's not going to boil at 40 degrees celsius so what does that do what does that do it's going to oxidize into the aldehyde but then as soon as you produce the aldehyde the condition that you set the aldehyde in is 40 degrees but it will evaporate at 20 degrees so at the moment you produce the aldehyde it will evaporate and leave the mixture. So you're not giving it any chance to go to make the carboxylic acid. It's kind of like, again, you're going back to the cooking, it's like you made your favorite dish, you took it out and you ate it straight away. You gave it no chance to turn into something else. Okay, so we use a basis of boiling point and melting point to do this particular question. And here are some answers here. Okay, so the aldehyde can be oxidized. So it needs to be removed. Okay, because it can be further oxidized, it can be removed. We need to get rid of it. And distillation separates um, liquids with different boiling points. So the aldehyde removes the aldehyde because that's the lowest boiling point because it has no hydrogen bonding. Okay, so um, merit question. Um, hopefully that makes sense. I mean, this can be easily turned into an excellence question if they want to. Um, the other part that you need to understand is reflux, but um, we'll see if this that part is covered in this exam. All right, next one. Describe and explain a chemical test to distinguish the following organic molecule. You should include reagents, conditions required, observations, um, type of uh, the reaction type to use to distinguish each pair, and structural formula and or any organic products. Okay, so I think I've done, yeah, I've done them separately. All right, so problem one, let's look at problem one. Um, so this particular question is actually quite easy because they didn't limit what you need to use. If the um, questions are limited, like they said, you have to use this, 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 and then that's when the question becomes hard. Um, so one day the questions are quite open ended like these, you can, you know, there are quite a few options that you can do. And um, we can go, I just go with the most obvious ones. And um, you can have a look at, look at some other alternatives. Okay, so when I see alkene, the first thing, this is from year 12. The one I see an alkane, an alkene in distinguishing test, bromine water. That's by far the easiest one. So if you have bromine water, if you have propane, 
what's going to happen is that your propane will undergo addition reaction and then you make 1,2-dibromo propane and what do we see? this is orange and this goes from orange to colorless straight away because this is an addition reaction straight away very fast reaction rate straight away okay and then the propyl 1 no, no reaction so it stays orange okay so what type of reaction is this this is addition reaction and that's how we can distinguish um, this particular couple i mean the other one that you can do i mean this is just my personal preference i see our kings and alkanes so i just chuck bromine water in there that's the easiest one um, if you want to use potassium dichromate like this one right here now you can see in the exam answers they tend to give you uh, the marking schedule they give you formulas like these you don't have to write it like that you can just draw the structure out like i did the other thing is you can add potassium dichromate now just be very careful with the potassium dichromate potassium dichromate will oxidize alcohols into carboxylic acid but then potassium dichromate will not oxidize alkenes into the diol so just as a side note for you if you going from if you want to turn because dichromate is not as strong as permanganate if you want your alkene to go to a diol this is a year 12 reaction you can't use potassium dichromate okay so that doesn't work you have to use potassium permanganate Okay, so um, if you if you said add acidified potassium permanganate, then that's not a distinguishing test because both the propyl one null and the propane will be oxidized. So you can't tell which one's which. But like I said, bromine water, easiest one. Next one, butanol and butan one null. Um, so again, there are quite a few um, options that you can do. Um, but the easiest one, when I see a aldehyde, when I see aldehyde, I will, hopefully you've done the practical this year, the, the thing I'll just use is Tolan's reagent, the, the famous um, silver mirror test. Okay, so you add Tolan's reagent, you make silver mirror, which is the, um, the, the reduction of Ag plus, you know, you have in Tolan's reagent, you have this, and that turns into the solid, which is a silver mirror. Okay. Um, now, um, and the other guy, if butan one all, this has no reaction with Tolan's reaction, so nothing happens. So, what type of reaction is this? This is oxidation. So, if we do butan now, if we oxidize it, you know, with the Tolan's reagent, I was, was going to write Tolan's reagent, but um, I was going to write the formula, but you don't need to. It's one of the complex signs that you learned in aqueous, but it doesn't matter. So what does it do? It's going to oxidize the, it's going to oxidize the um, aldehyde into carboxylic acid. Okay. Now, this is where when you have give, when you've been given butan one O and butan L, again a lot of people just get really excited and they just talk about mno4 minus h plus and they talk about cr2072 minus h plus and because they learn oh butan 10 react with these um, butanol should only react with tolan's reagent if you want you can talk about benedict solution you can talk about failing solution you know if you do decide to talk about failing reagent that's going from um the it's, it's going from the the blue color and you kind of make the orange red precipitate okay um so that's in the answers below but i just personally like tolerance a lot better um because of the silver mirror everyone remembers the silver mirror now just remember that why do we why do these not work well they these things are horrible well, they wouldn't be a um an appropriate distinguishing test to distinguish butanol and butanol because these two will react with both of them so you can't tell which one's which why does Tolan's reagent work with um, aldehyde because aldehyde is a much better reactant in, in the oxidation reduction reaction so if you want a bit of recap, uh, recap on redox um, so this is undergoing reduction reaction so the Ag plus is, uh, is what we call the oxidant and then this is what we call the reductant. 
Now, tolerance reagent is a really, really, really weak oxidant. If you put tolerance reagent with alcohol, the tolerance reagent is not strong enough to oxidize the butanone or to butanol or to butan noic acid it doesn't have the strength to do it but because the aldehyde is so reactive this is very reactive so if you put the really reactive tol um, the aldehyde with a really crappy oxidant like the tolerance reagent or the failing solutions they can still react and give you the carboxylic acid and in the process you make the silver mirror if you do the tolerance reagent or you make the red precipitate if you used um, failing solutions okay so there you go so add tolerance reagent da, 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 butanol as you can see it's much easier but if you so that's one already gone through you form silver mirror the other one doesn't react okay so the benedict solution same thing you also make the carboxylic acid you make the red orange precipitate um, because but then this goes from blue they actually didn't tell you what color it was at the beginning it, in this particular case you're going from copper into copper oxide okay so you're going from cu2 plus to cu1 plus so that's a reduction again failing region benedict solutions very very weak oxidant very similar to tolerance reagent okay next one ethanoid chloride and ethyl pentanoate oh how exciting acyl chloride when you see acyl chloride you go to chemical water because acyl chloride is so reactive so this is ethanoid chloride if you put water in there you are going to um, cause a nucleophilic substitution. What's going to happen is the um, the H2O, well, the OH group will be substituted. So this is substitution. This is substitution reaction because your um, Cl got substituted. And this is an extremely vigorous reaction. So you will see, f um, you will see steamy white fumes you will see steamy fumes. And if you actually test the fume, what is the fume? The fume is the HCl. The HCl is acidic. So if you test the, um, the steamy fume with red, uh, sorry, with blue limbs paper, you will turn red. That's how you know, okay? Um, and then um, that's, the ester doesn't do anything with water. Okay, so why again? So with anything with acyl chloride, you learn in year thirteen. Any reaction you do, there's nothing above the error. Okay, there's nothing here because these guys are so reactive, because the chlorine is a very what we call a very strong leaving group. It really, really wants to be replaced. Um, super reactive, and that's how we can do this question. Okay, so pretty straightforward. Um, so here's the answer. Here, you undergo a substitution reaction. Should be nucleophilic substitution, but it doesn't matter. Reacts vigorously, white st steamy fumes, limus paper turns red, and the other one will not react because think of fat. That's what ester is fat. It doesn't dissolve in water. Okay, next one. XY, WXY. All right, I love questions like these. Um, so this is your oops, this is your structural formula. So you need four carbons, six H's, one O and C L. So W shows the following properties, does not exerts any enantiomers. So what does that mean? That means there's no chiral carbon. Produces steamy fumes with what? Oh my God, how convenient. Um, so this is a very good example. Of, if you get stuck, look for answers somewhere else in the questions. So that means you have COCl. Reacts with SX ammonia to produce X. X turns damp litmus paper blue. So X, X is basic. And the only thing that you learn in year 13 and year 12, that's basic, is an amine. Okay, so that's what you, that's a clue so far. And then X undergoes as a, so let's worry about X a little bit later. So let's see if we can figure out um, the W first. Um, so we know it has no chiral carbon. So let's just play around with this. You've got four carbons, you must have four carbons. You have no chiral carbon. So what is a chiral carbon? Chiral carbon is a carbon that is bonded to four different groups. So you can't have that. If you have that, you have what we call optical isomers. So if I just try an error, this, so we must have the COCl, like it says here. So we have that. And we can't have optical isomers. So that means so far, none of these guys have 
optical isomers. So I can do a few things here. Let's say if I put the CL here, let's say if I put the CL here, and then put the H's here, put the H's here, and then put the H here, let's say if I do the H's here, this will be incorrect. Why? Because this carbon will become a chiral carbon because the carbon is bonding to H, CL, the slot, and the slot. Okay, so that can't be right. So I can't put I can't put the I can't put the, the CL there. Same reason I can't put the CL I can't put the CL here. If I put the CL here, I will make this carbon chiral, and that's not a good thing. So how do I where should I put it? I should put the CL right at the end. Um because that will give me two H's, and that will be two H's, and that will be two H's. None of these carbons are chiral carbons. Okay, so that's how we can we we can use we can give you all these clues. That's why I love questions like these because you have to understand everything in organic to be able to do this. And that's why some people hate it because if you don't know what enantiomers do, uh, what enantiomers are, then you will have no chance doing this opportunity doing this question. This is actually actually an excellent question. There's no explanation. You just draw them, and then you get excellence. Okay, so that's this is W. We figured out W. W will look like this. That's why organic is the most, I personally feel is the most difficult paper to prepare because the questions are incredibly um, unpredictable because we can mix and match all the concepts together. Um, whereas structure bonding and aqueous are so predictable. I mean, just wrote learn to five years exams, you are guaranteed to pass. I mean, the questions are so repetitive. It's a bit of a joke sometimes, but let's move on. So we know what W is. Now we can figure out what X is because W reacted to X. What do we do? We added conch and H3 in alcohol. So what does that do? That does two things. So first of all, you have a COC, you have a COCL group, and hopefully you remember I told you just now how reactive the COCLs are. So the COCL, the CL will be leaving, and then you replace the CL with the NH2. Now, just remember another reaction from your year 12 reaction. If you have a CCL, and then if you react with ammonia, you know, in alcohol that's concentrated, you also replace the CCL to give you the CH2, which is why, uh, sorry, the NH2, which is why it is basic, because this part is basic. This is the part that turns damp litmus paper blue, not this section, okay, not this part. The amide are so um, close to neutral, we'll just say it's neutral. Um, they, they're very, very weakly basic. We just ignore it. We just say it's neutral. So this is a very good question because it tests you on two things. Substitution on the CL group, substitution on the COCL group. So you have to do it on two sides. That's why this is an excellence question. Okay, next one. Why? Product X undergoes acid hydrolysis. So that means you're reacting those with an acid to produce product Y. Bubbles are released when product Y reacts with sodium carbonate solution. So what does that mean when you react with sodium carbonate? Carbonate, that means you have to have an acid. What is the only thing that you know in year 13 and year 12 that is an acid? COOH, okay? So hydrolysis means that you, you're adding water and you're adding H+, okay? So that means acid hydrolysis. So first thing first, let's do the the right hand side I've uh, always have done so you must have a COOH group otherwise how do you get the acid you have to have COOH so the NH2 has been substituted with an OH group now the other thing your NH2 what did we say it was it was basic wasn't it what do we react it with acidic condition acid plus base gives you salt and water but in this case it's not water um, what is the definition of an H of a base again from aqueous or from level 2 2.6 um, acid a, a base always accept an H plus ions so when they neutralize you gain an H plus ions and that's how you know you got an excellence for this question Okay, so hopefully this is helpful enough. But again, um, with um, uh, with organic, um, what I'll probably do later on 
um, once I've gone through all the exam papers for from 2019, I will start breaking down the concepts into smaller chunks and I'll focus more, you know, what are enantiomers, um, reactions, hydrolysis, maybe just focus on those individually rather than doing these because if you, like I said, if you don't have understanding in any, if you're missing understanding in any one part of those, you're not going to get this question. Okay, so hopefully you found this helpful enough. Again, um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Um, otherwise, please subscribe, help the channel grow, um, share with your friends. Um, otherwise, study hard, stay safe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.